Welcome to a composites testing video from the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. My name is Leon. Before we get too far, I wanted to thank Keith F. for being a fantastic supporter of the channel by being a designer tier patron on Patreon. And I just sent him his free t-shirt for being at the designer tier. Thanks a lot, Keith. Now let's get to it. After I finished the last composites testing video on the cantilever beam test on some carbon fiber sheets, I realized I wanted to do just a little bit more, make a supplementary video to that one. Because there are a few more things that were worth testing and talking about. And one in particular, if you remember on the deflection test that we did on this four harness satin, it deflected less than just about anything else, except for the three layers of the spread toe. And we really never got into why. And in this video, I want to talk about why, do another test on that one. And I also mentioned on a number of tests that the thicker the piece is, the less it should deflect. All other things being equal. And so we're going to do a test on a sandwich piece that is using spread toe. So if you remember, we did spread toe with two layers. This is going to be two layers of spread toe, but separated by eighth inch of foam, and we'll test deflection on this and see why thickness makes a difference. Let's talk about the four harness satin fabric first. Now, if you remember in the last video, I mentioned that the fabric weave is three over, one under, three over, and so on. And let me demonstrate that just a little bit more with this piece of raw fabric here. Now, as you can see, running this direction, you can have a thread that goes three over, and then it goes under, and then it goes three over, and then it goes under one, and so on. But in this direction, that's not what you have. It's the other way around. It's one over, three under, one over, three under. So most of the fabric on this side is running this direction. Now let's flip it over. So most of the fabric on this side is running 90 degrees. It's running this direction. So this is where you have three over and one under going this way. Now that has some consequences. Let's look at the piece that we tested in the last video. So this is that same four harness satin. And you can see that there's three over, one under. So most of the fabric is running in this direction on this side. Now this is two ply which means there's two layers of fabric. So on the back side, let me flip it this way. Now it is harder to see, but the, on this side, the three overs are also running in this direction. On both sides, the three overs are running in the same direction. That means the two middle sides are running this way, the three overs. Well, that has a consequence on how strong this part is. It's going to be stronger in one direction than the other. Now, since most of the fabric on this face is running this way, when we put this in tension or compression, it's going to be stronger than if we, well, let me go ahead and bend it. So if I bend it toward you, this side is going to be in tension. If I bend it away, this side's going to be in compression. So it's going to be fairly strong, but if I change that 90 degrees, now let me bend it toward you, it's going to be weaker. That's because we only have one over in this direction and then three under. So the in this direction, all the strength is actually in the middle of the part. What well, doesn't do us any good? The exterior of the parts is where your tension and compression strength is exerted. The middle has almost zero compression and tension strength. And that's going to become a factor when we go do our sandwich example. So when we did our test, we tested it like this, the strong direction. We did not test it in the weak direction. So that's what we're going to do next. Let's repeat the test that we did in the last video when I was comparing the various sheets of carbon fiber. As we did it in the last video, uh, according to this arrow, we have the three overs, one under, running in this direction on both the top and the bottom. That means the three overs going this direction are in the middle of the sheet. 
So they are not adding any tension or compression strength to the sheet. All they're adding is shear strength. And when we bend it down, the top is in tension, the bottom is in compression. So this sheet should be stronger in this orientation than this one. Well, let's do our test again. We have our 71 gram weight. We'll record where we start at and we'll put our weight on here. And we record how far we've deflected. Now let's turn our sheet 90 degrees and do the test again. Well, as you can see from this arrow, I have now turned this 90 degrees so that the three overs are running this direction. That means we should be strongest in this direction, weakest in this direction, since there are only one overs and then three unders go in this direction. Let's see what happens with our standard weight. So it goes all the way down to the bed. So it's definitely weaker in this orientation than the other. I would like to revisit something that I've mentioned in the previous video on doing the cantilever beam tests, and that is that the thicker the part is, the stiffer it will be. And I made that comment mostly in reference to that hand layup I did that was around 27 mils thick, and it was stiffer than using the same fabric that was 20 mils thick. Now, not necessarily stronger, it probably would not have been as strong in compression, but at least in this beam test, it was stiffer. Also in that previous video, we tested a couple of spread toes. One of the tests we did did not give us a result, and that was this 15 mils thick, two layers of spread toe carbon fiber. And maybe you'll remember when we put it in our cantilever beam test, when we put a weight on it, it went all the way down to the bed of the mill and so we couldn't get a measurement. So it deflected more than 60 millimeters or so. And we also tested another sample of the spread toe, but it had three layers of the spread toe. It was 21 mils thick, so roughly equivalent to the other two by two twills we were testing, but this was stiffer. Now this should be stiffer just because there are fewer crimps in the fabric. Now that middle layer, we got three layers, that middle layer really shouldn't be providing any or almost any additional strength to the part, at least in this cantilever beam test. All the tension and compression should be in the outer layers, the top and bottom of the part. So that middle layer really shouldn't be contributing anything. Only thing it's doing is making it thicker. And that's why this three layer is stiffer than the two layer. Well, what if we really make it thick? So we could do something like this piece. Now this piece is also the same fabric, a two by two twill. There's one layer on one side, one layer on another. In the middle, there's an eight inch thick, roughly three millimeters thick piece of divinyl cell, which is a PVC foam. In this case, it was a H45, which is a three pounds per cubic foot density foam. Now this happened to be a failure because it was my very first attempt to do resin infusion on a sandwich part. So uh, what I ended up doing is trying to salvage it for the test we're doing now by doing a hand layup on the part that didn't infuse properly. Well this part is 156 mils thick. So that's 10 times as thick as this two layer piece. So this should be way, way stiffer than the two layer piece. And of course, just by handling it, I can tell that it's much stiffer. But let's do the cantilever beam test and see how far it bends using the same weight we've used on the other sheets. Now I've put our sandwich in our test jig. Now in this case, it's two by two twill. So the orientation shouldn't matter. It should have the same amount of strength in either direction. And it's got the same fabric on the top and the bottom, one sheet of the spread toe 2x2 two two twill. This was my first attempt at a sandwich and it was a failure, at least as far as vacuum infusion goes, but I did a wet layup afterward and fixed it so we could at least do some testing with it. Now in this layup, because the carbon fiber is so stiff and the foam core is much more elastic 
than the carbon fiber. The carbon fiber is going to be carrying all the tension strength on top and compression strength on the bottom. The only thing the foam is doing is carrying a shear load back to our cantilever point. Well, let's do our test, same one we've done on all our sheets. We mark where we start at and we put our 71 gram load out on the tip and see how much we deflect. And we deflected a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. It's definitely measurable, but it's far, far less than our carbon fiber sheets we've been testing. Let's have a little fun and do a little more weight and see what happens. I happen to have a nice little heavy aluminum bar here that's 485 grams. And let's see what that does. Still, it didn't deflect much. It deflected far less than any of our sheets did with our much lighter weight. And you know what? I got a little bit heavier one. Let's do this again. Now on my last sheet that I did this test on, it actually caused a little cracking back on this back edge with this 650 gram weight. So this may cause it to fail, but let's see what happens. By golly, it's holding it too. It's doing a good job. And it still deflected far less than the sheet did. Now this particular piece weighs 90 grams. I think a vacuum infusion would probably weigh a little bit more. Um, but if you add uh, 10 grams to that, it's equivalent to the aluminum. But it's far, far stiffer than the aluminum is. So given a one-to-one -one weight, this carbon fiber is far stiffer. You can use fewer ribs and fewer bulkheads and potentially then have a lighter airplane. In this video, the purpose wasn't necessarily to determine specific properties of these carbon fiber samples. The purpose was really to try to demonstrate how the properties can change based on the orientation of the weave of the fabric and changing the thickness of the part. I thought you guys might find this interesting. We got a lot more carbon fiber testing planned. Before long, we were going to start some shear testing where we're tearing some carbon fiber samples apart. And in that case, we really are going to try to determine specific properties of the carbon fiber samples. And there's going to be even more testing after that. If you haven't done it already, don't forget to click on the link down in the description for the Facebook link for the channel, and then do a like on that page. By doing that, you could get notified of events or changes or upcoming videos that really don't work a whole YouTube video by themselves. If you would like to support the channel, one of the ways you can do that is by going down to the description of this video and clicking on the link to the channel's Patreon page. And for as little as $1 a month, you can help support the channel. So explore on there and see if any of those tiers interest you. Well, now I need to go start working on a testing fixture.